Okay, so here we go. I took this all apart, two of them, and there all the strings are out, and I got a bucket full of them. Place mats, and I've got a piece of walnut. So my plan is to put this in the bucket and um, put these on top and we're going to make a bowl with all this, well not all this, some of that because I don't think it's going to take all of that. Um, I do know that these pieces are going to be a lighter color. Um, I cut one in half and you can tell that you know they're they've been stained and that's okay i'm going to use kind of a transparent color i think to go with it so you can kind of see the light and dark um difference and we're just gonna we're gonna play see what happens Some color to you. I am actually going to mix these guys in with the epoxy uh, just a few at a time because I want to get them completely coated all around. Okay. Let me start pouring this in. I'll get mostly the that way if I feel like I need to add more. The problem is it is very thick. So I'm worried about it flowing down and around. I only have a, oh, a 20 or 30 minute work window with this stuff. Let's get her in the pressure pot. Okay, hi everybody. Here we are on the lathe. And as you can see, I got a piece of wood here that I didn't have. Well, I don't know if you can see it that well, but um, an extra piece of wood here. And I have some blue epoxy on the top when I use purple. So I had to do a, a second pour on it because the wood drank up a lot of the epoxy and it came down uh, into the little chunks of wood. And of course they all floated. There's a random one just hanging out there and I think over here there's a couple random ones. So I don't know how that's gonna look. So I'm gonna get to spinning and we're going to start to knock back some of this and, yeah, see what we think of it. I mean, I'm hoping all those little pieces don't go flinging out just whenever I get them so far uh, exposed, which is a possibility. All right, let's do it.
Okay, not positive that this is the shape I'm going to go with. I know it looks like a good or a shape that I've kind of thought out. I just got to turning on the wood and it kind of was telling me that. Now the thing that I hate is that I would now want to do a mortise instead of a tenon. Actually, I could still do a, a tenon in there. Just inside, scoop out some of it and then put, put my tenon in. So that's probably what I'll do. I don't know if I like that or not. I um, have to give that some thought. I finally got rid of all of the voids there. You know, I, I, I expect to still have some like where the holes were from the wood. Uh, yeah. So that looks sparse there, but there is some more wood beyond that. There, a little bit there. And then, of course, there's plenty between here and that. Between the here and the middle. So I've got to think about how thick I want her. Um, looks like I might have gotten... Got still those, but I must have turned away the one that was sitting right here on that edge. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know if I'll... what I'm gonna do. Decisions! Decisions! Still yet to be made. I'm going to take this down a little bit more. Maybe try to get that a little more rounded. I haven't decided there. And then straighten out a little bit of this ridges and figure out where my line is going to be. Um, get some of this stuff just kind of taken care of on the outside. And then I'll start working on the inside. Okay, let's get at it.
All right, I'm going to put a mark in here because I can feel myself falling constantly back into this groove. Right now I'm not too thin, but what I want to be careful of when you're in with your tools kind of so far, it's hard to tell when you're, especially with these round um, little carbide tools, sometimes you tend to fall back into the same groove, or at least I do. So I am going to put a mark in here where I feel like I could potentially have that problem, or I feel the start of that problem. decided to use on my little voids is some UV resin from um, Let's Resin. They reached out to me and asked me if I would want to try some of their products and I was so super excited. Um, one of the things I asked to try was their UV resin. I had gotten on their site and they had, I'd seen their um, colored UV resin and they also sent me just some clear of the hard type, type and they sent me the UV light advanced which is super cool and I will unbox all that and show it to you guys um, yeah so let's talk about the colored resin it has like a red a, a peach a pink um kind of a yellow some greens blues purples and a white and a black they're not a real heavy pigmented uh color they are fairly translucent because UV resin has to be kind of clear to be able to cure it or translucent enough. If you get it uh, colored too darkly, it won't, it won't cure right. So I picked out a blue out of their UV resin and um, I think that's what I'm going to put into my little voids. I may use some clear, um, but see, I had the kind of hint of a purple in this side, and then I have the blue, but where some of my other blues kind of sank down in there, um, whenever I had to do my second pour, I had added some darker blues, and some of it sank, some of it set more on top, so I ended up turning that away. So that's the reason I think I'm going to try to go with a blue now, as far as the UV lamp that they asked me about a few of them, and this one was one that I was uh, drawn to. 
or they had asked me if I wanted. Uh, it is a, let's get it out of the package. It is a double sided lamp. So you've got your UV lights here and your UV lights here. Now, of course, that isn't going to work on something like this, but I can also use it detached and use the lamp just like that. Um, it comes with, like I said, your two parts, and then it comes with a tray that you can put in. And then if you have, say, some small little molds or something that you're just doing a UV, um, UV resin with, you know, little, little somethings. And the other thing that is super exciting about, I have bought other UV lamps and I have them, but the biggest problem that I've found is they don't want to stay on for 30 to 60 seconds whenever you get these. You can get the ones that are for like fingernails or that would cure um, different things, but um, those usually are maybe 30 or 60 seconds. And then you're having to sit there and watch and re-push the button every time until your epoxy gets cured. So this one has a two minute, a three minute, and a five minute. So I would be able to put my epoxy in here, click it on for the five minutes, and be comfortable that it's going to be cured. You know, if I had a bigger spot, I may have to go a little longer. But I do, you know, these, they'll probably be cured in the two minute range but I don't have to set and babysit a button. So that's what really drew me to, to the Let's Resin um, UV lamp. Um, like I said, they have some that are just um, flat, or not flat, but uh, on a stand where they're not double-sided, but I did see how the double-sided will come in to play for me later. So, let me just do some more unpackaging and getting some of this stuff out of the way and I will kind of show you how this is going to work and what I'm going to do with it. Yeah, so excited. Also, um, they are offering a discount code um, to my viewers, so that's super exciting. Um, they're, I'm going to have it in the link in a link below in my description. And you guys can go, if you're interested in any of the UV resins or the lamp, um, the things I'm using today, and they have a whole host of different types of epoxies and stuff. I'm gonna be excited because I get to use some of their deep pour real soon. Um, but yeah, when this came in, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to just jump in and give it a try. So we're gonna have a code down there and, um, yeah, I know I've used codes from other turners in the past and to save money, and this should give you a 10% discount. So I circled some spots, um, and made sure I knew where I was going to be putting the resin. Let me come around here to one that I know is, okay, let's go here and here and here. I've got a toothpick here to help with if there ends up any air bubbles actually in the UV resin. Um, I know they talk about using um, uh, warming up, warming it up a little bit if it's cold to help with the air bubbles. But I do believe if you hold it upside down for a little bit, that causes any air bubbles that may be in your, in your bottle to kind of, ooh, right there I see one. Let's see how well. I have to take my glasses off. And the problem that you have with air bubbles and something like this is mainly because you're just putting a little dot in a already previous air bubble. 
so it's going to want to trap any air down in it. So I'm just on the two minute and after just a few seconds of it being how that's going to set. It's going to set pretty good. Of it being um, uh, underneath the, the UV light, I will be able to set this on here. All right. I have all the UV resin in my spots. And I'm going to go ahead and try to kind of sand those back. And yeah. Get on with some of that. got you cleaned off for the next go around. Okay, we're going to move on to some sanding sealer. Start out on the inside, focusing mainly on the wood because that's really what needs to be sealed. some sanding paste. See if I can work some of this out. Pretty clear. I want 
will definitely go with it. All right. We're going to try burning a line in here. I don't know after I've already done all my sanding and all that, but I don't know how well that's going to work. And I don't know how well walnut burns, and since there's epoxy mix with it, I don't think it can hurt anything. We'll give it a go. a lot but I think it helps pop this a little better that is interesting okay we're gonna give her get her turned around and get her bottom off All right, guys, what do you think? It's quite interesting. Um, the wood down here is walnut, 
and these are, are the little pieces of a placemat that I disassembled and put in on top. Um, I did realize that they would probably float, but I was hoping to get a deeper layer of them down closer to the wood. Uh, I, I just needed to pile probably a lot more in there. Um, the cons I had thought about placing something on top of them to keep the little wooden pieces down but I was too concerned that I would get too many uh, air bubbles and trapped air bubbles and all that stuff um, that you know I didn't want a bunch of air bubbles caught in the middle of them and I was really worried that that's that's what I would you know end up having my only other solution to that would have been to glue a bunch of pieces together, but I would have had to have glued such a bunch of them all the way around because I didn't know what shape I was going to go with. So you want to make sure that you would have have enough. And maybe if I try it again, uh, I'll glue some of them together because I definitely have plenty. I did uh, cut apart two of the placemats. I have two more and I still actually have quite a few of the little wooden discs left. Um, for some reason kind of reminds me of um, oh, Tinker Toys. Do you guys remember Tinker Toys? I guess it's all the little the little holes where the thread ran through um, that kind of gives me that vibe and the disc shape. Yeah, I got her bottom off. Um, did a few decorative rings in the bottom of it. And, you know, I burnt around my little bead here and a few marks there just to kind of decorate it up a little more. I don't know that she needed it. The walnut is beautiful. And, of course, with it being very cracked, you know, if I would have just turned it into a straight bowl, I would have been filling all these cracks up. So I was happy to see that the epoxy went in uh, very deep and everything. So, anyway, what do you guys think? Kind of interesting. Let me set her up there. I want to say thank you to Let's Resin. Um, with them reaching out to me has opened up some opportunities for me to be able to experiment with different things. Uh, like I said, super excited about the UV resin kit. This is the color. It has 12 different colors in it and um, worked out really great. You don't see any voids. Now the blue wasn't super strong. I was kind of hoping it was as strong as that but it you just you just don't see where I re had to repair the little holes that were in it so that worked out great um in the future it'll work out great just because I believe with this the different colors it opens it up to where I can maybe use UV resin to try to do something with versus five minute epoxy or something like that um so yeah I am thankful for them to for reaching out to me for that and um, also the light. Light worked out great. Um, was nice to be able to push the button and walk away and be able to do other things like setting up for other sanding because I knew I would be sanding after that. So instead of sitting here having to hold a light if I was going to use some kind of um, some kind of a UV resin. Uh, it anyway worked out great for me. So, also, they are giving me a discount code for you guys, so you can save ten percent if you're interested in any of the products that I use and try out. I'll give you my honest opinion if I like them, and so far, I really like this. It worked out great. Um, and I've got some ideas for some other stuff 
to use with this uh, this UV resin also. So I'm super happy and glad that I can get you guys a 10% discount code. I have used discount codes from other turners in the past to help save me money. You know, any way we can save a dollar is great. So glad that they're gonna do that. So you can just check my links below in the description and click on the, the link. So that's great news. So, and thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And if you haven't, please do. It will help my channel grow, get me out to more people. And, you know, that's the reason I'm doing this is to reach out to others. And I learned my word turning skills from YouTube. And if I can inspire somebody else to go out and try some interesting things, then I think it's great if I can help somebody else. Um, I'm almost to my thousand subscriber. I may be over it by the time this one comes out or hopefully if it if I'm not there this one will put me over it. So I'm going to try to do some kind of giveaway after I've reached my th thousand subscriber mark. And um, so leave me a comment because that's how I'm going to draw your guys' names to give you a chance to win um, something. Uh, it'll probably be a piece I've turned. It may be a previous piece that I will put out some options for whoever wins. You know, could be this piece, could be um, one of my past pieces. And we'll, we'll cross that bridge whenever I get to that thousand. So subscribe if you haven't. And if you have, thank you very much. And I wanna say, have a great day, and we'll see you on the flip side. Oh, we're gonna put her in the picture box.